Hey guys, welcome to Culture and People podcast. Uh, Kyle, in a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. I am a connector. Um, over the last three years, I've been a recruiter. I started out in uh, recruiting recruiters, amongst other things, and just basically Googling how to recruit. And then now today, I'm an executive recruiter focused on chief people officers and VPs of recruiting for the startup world. Um, outside of that, I do community building. So I have a men's personal development group. I have, um, I'm a part of a biology of belonging global virtual boot camp. I'm in the process of building out a community for caregivers. Um, I'm a journeyman, so I do some life coaching as well. I had about eight years in the mental health field um, before diving into this crazy, weird startup environment. Um, I'm a loving son of two parents who are still here in Southern California, and I am single and looking for my lifelong partner as I turn 30 this year. Woohoo! Wow, that was a tall order. You're such a like amazing human. I love everything <laughs> you do. It, like comes into this like I know Kyle. So this is like I I just am so delighted to have everybody get exposure to you because I think what you're doing is so amazing. So. For you, what's the best thing about working in this people and culture space? Yeah, um, in, in many ways, the same things that I got from working in the mental health field. Mm -hmm. Like people are like such a big challenge for companies, especially, but people in general for our own personal developments, and I speak for my behalf, the way I learn about myself is always changing. And so that fluidity and... It, you know, every single moment of my work is an opportunity to build culture or to build into the people first practices. Um, and as a recruiter who recruits basically the, the uh, innovators mm -hmm. in the people function, um, I, I get to see what's occurring. And lo and behold, it is a major disruption right now. The transformation of the HR into the people operations, the paper pusher into the innovative strategist, even though I am Silicon Valley and I, people use strategy all the time. Um, it's, it's disruptive. It's transformational. I think it is ripe for new ideas. And the fact that we are still understanding what being human means in the context of work it makes it really fun to to be a add to. Yeah, it really does. I agree. I agree. So I'm hearing from other leaders uh, like yourself that engaging employees is a challenge. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, I did a, a, a talk with a staffing agency many years ago. And, you know, one of the things we came to a conclusion was we're working eight plus hours together. And then we go home into our personal lives. And for some that works, but I would argue for most, there's a, a stark distinction of work and personal life. And I think the way we engage employees is to help bridge that more, help support that transition more so that people feel that they can show up more fully, mm -hmm. which ultimately means that you need to invest more in employee experience, in employee wellness, in their own development and how they develop with the organization. Yeah. Like it's not just employee KPIs, it's not just the onboarding. A lot of the best chief people officers I've spoken to are really diving into the weeds on predictive analytics, which means that they're looking in depth about the employee experience from the moment that recruiter has engaged with them to their first 90 day review, to even when they're doing the offboarding. If those things aren't being tracked in some form, and ironically enough, it's hard to track those. On one hand, greenhouse is like only for applicant tracking, and then there's not much else out there for employee experience along the way. Yeah. It is a ripe field, but um, you know, I think engaging employees is there needs to be the individual goals. There needs to be the team goals. There needs to be the company goals. And the only way to bridge all three of those is with transparency. I love that. I think it's, and, and I think we're learning that even more than ever during COVID. 
right? The importance of transparency. And and what companies never did really well in my in my 20 or 20 some years <laughs> doing this is saying we don't know. Mm. And they've been forced to say, I don't I actually don't know what we're going to do next. I don't know how we're going to come out of this. And I think that that's actually gained, I think they've seen that that's gained trust with their employees when you aren't over there like, yeah, we have this all figured out. They can tell you don't, especially during something like this. Totally. I uh, recently I had a candidate who was in the interview process, and this is an executive level candidate in the interview process for three months. Um, the the candidate was tired amongst many other things. The way that we moved through that together was transparency. The hiring manager showed up, jumped on a long 60 minute call with that candidate to share what exactly was happening on the back end, and ultimately built that rapport again. And like now they work together. That's um, so, so amazing. Yeah. And in, in a lot of situations that would have been, they just slowly stop talking to each other and, and then they wonder whatever happened. Was it me? Was it you? I'm really glad that that was able to sort of be the, the cohesive, the whole cohesive piece. Um, mm -hmm. So what advice, Kyle, because you see a, a lot, I think from that recruiter perspective, especially recruiting um, HR and people ops people, what advice would you share with organizations who do want to advance their culture or their people strategy? Yeah, it, as you said, people ops people, I just laugh because it's, we're talking, we're using the word people so much these days. Um, and I love it. And humanity. It's and humanity. Word, it's, everybody's talking about humanity. Humanity, humanity, humanity. Um, you know, what immediately comes to mind is that one of my, one of my clients, and I've worked with them for a while, is GitLab. GitLab does a lot of things great. And if you haven't heard of them, looked at them, like you need to. They have a, they are the largest fully remote company in the world. They have the biggest uh, remote manifesto out there um, because they've been remote since 15 employees and that handbook and their employee handbook now is seven plus thousand pages. The reason why it's so long is because they've developed a company goal. Mm -hmm. Every employee individually has a goal for how many merge requests they have to update that handbook. And so now there's a collective uh, achievement that can be celebrated and shown and everyone's involved. Doing things like that where the employee has an impact on the company's growth is huge. Yeah, um, yeah. Something that I, I'm not sure how it looks in the future of work, but I believe it will be important is building space for people to show up fully. We see that in employee resource groups right now and ERGs are going through a major transformation in themselves. And if you create space for belonging, for people to share themselves, letting go of the fear that employees are going to complain and vent about all the things that aren't working. But if you lean into trusting that we can figure it out together, I do think that space for people to show up fully is going to be very important and how that looks is just maybe have an employee who feels pulled to be a facilitator and moving energy in a group of people for like one hour a week some consistent cadence where people can show up and share themselves yeah um, you don't even have to do a survey like you can get a pulse of the company from people's real-time voices um, and I know from my own leadership experience, Kyle, that a lot of times, maybe even all the times, I had to go first, or mm -hmm. I at least had to join in. If I was always holding back and I didn't share that, I mean, my employees know when we're have, I'm having a personally bad day, whether it's emotional or physical or whatever, they know what's going on with my family. They know when I'm feeling stressed or I'm saying like, guys, because of this thing that's happening, I'm not thinking as clearly. And I know that's probably going to affect how I'm talking to you. So what could I be doing better or differently for you? What information have I not been giving you lately because of this stress? Conversation. Totally. totally. And I, you know, you can break that apart into so many layers. Like, sure, the CEO of the company doesn't need to know about everything in your personal life. And at the same point, your hiring manager or your direct manager to know what you're going to be doing on your vacation so that they can make sure that you're unplugged like, for example, I just had that recently where I was off for a week and my, uh, he's not my manager, but kind of, you know, he, he 
told me, he's like, delete Slack off your phone. Like, what are you doing? Cause I popped in there to respond to something that okay. was, that was so soul nourishing on so many levels. And my employee experience just went through the roof because of that interaction. And I also yeah. unplugged more fully so that I could show up more fully when I was back. Yeah, that permission is so important. And Kyle, we've had such great conversation that we're already at time. So I'll cut us off for today, but thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Thank you. 